Hi there. Um, as some of you might know, I've had a beverage antenna project uh, running for several weeks now, uh, sort of behind schedule because um, I've decided to build all of the components myself. Um, so, for example, I've had to build two transformers, uh, one for 75 ohm impedance for my Sony ICF 2001D and then another one at 50 ohms for the ELAD FDM Duo. Now, I realise that there's some kind of speculation as to the benefits of having a transformer for a received beverage, um, although there was general consensus that at lower frequencies, so for example, medium wave, long wave de-exiting, um, there was a benefit. Um, the design I've used is available on the medium wave circle website, um, but what I haven't really done until more recently was any sort of in-depth research on beverage antennas. Now, Several months ago, I bought a book, The Practical Antenna Handbook by Joseph Carr, and didn't realise until yesterday that it's an extremely popular antenna uh, book, and it's possibly the most popular antenna book ever written, and it's well known, so some of you may have a copy. But anyway, I had a look at um, beverage designs and came across the maximum effective length, the implication being that if you have a beverage that's hundreds of meters long, some of that length may not be directly contributing to the uh, strength and the clarity of your signal. Um, um, so what I discovered was that one of the big proponents of beverage antennas, this guy Misech, believed that the maximum effective length is likely to be about 1.6 to 1.7 times the wavelength of the signal of interest for the tropical band region, or 1.8 to 7.3 megahertz. So you know, that's quite interesting. But what I also suggest is that uh, below 1.8 megahertz, so medium wave, long wave, the maximum effective length might only be about half that of the wavelength of the signal of interest. Now, that's really interesting because at long wave, some of the uh, wavelengths of the signals that you're listening to are almost two kilometers in length. Um, at first, it felt counterintuitive, but actually it seems reasonable because an end terminated beverage antenna is non-resonant so on that basis you know is it possible that there is a maximum effective length and beyond that you you know it's forever diminishing returns in at least with signal strength quite possibly um, the math seems pretty straightforward but in my limited experience there's nothing straightforward or simple with um, antenna design there's a lot of voodoo engineering with antennas and um, you know it's difficult to get to the bottom of, of um, some of the issues. Um, and I, it kind of makes sense because to, to prove the performance of an antenna, you would have to set up an experiment, collect empirical data. But there are so many variables um, with regard to, you know, listening to radio waves, you know, propagation. Let's just start with that. It's a difficult thing to solve practically. So this is the maths. So the maximum effective length for a beverage is the wavelength of the signal of interest divided by 4 multiplied by 100 over k minus 1. So wavelength is the wavelength of the signal in meters of interest. k is what's known as the velocity factor, expressed numerically as a percentage. Um, so maximum effective length, yeah, a function of wavelength and velocity factor, but what on earth is velocity factor? Well, also known as the wave propagation speed, and it's, I think, a dimensionless number. It's basically the ratio of the speed at which electromagnetic radiation passes through a medium uh, to the speed of light in a vacuum. Now, the speed of light in, vac in a vacuum is 3 times 10 to the 8 uh, meters per second, which is basically 300 million meters per second. Um, and as electromagnetic radiation passes through uh, spaces or volumes of material uh, it apparently uh, changes the propagation speed. Uh, now I always thought that the speed of light was the same so maybe this is, uh, but this isn't light of course, this is another part of the electromagnetic uh, spectrum and so you know what I was interested in knowing was what's the maximum effective length of my antenna and already I'm questioning the laws of physics because it does get complicated. Um, but to complete the equation, we need a value for the velocity factor, uh, k. Uh, it's one of the variables in the equation. Um, and um, 
as you might suspect, the medium being the insulator uh, around the wire being used for the beverage antenna is important. And it's an electrical property of that insulator and it's known as the dielectric constant, also known as the relative permittivity and confusingly denoted also with a K but in the but lower case. So what is, the, what is the dielectric constant? Well, it's another ratio. Of, uh, it's the permittivity of the substance to the permittivity of free space. Um, it's an expression of how a material can concentrate electric flux, and it's analogous to the principle of relative magnetic permeability. Oh dear. Well, magnets are something I know about because in my work, I've been working in the MRI magnet industry for over 20 years. So relative magnetic permeability is basically um, if you have a magnet that generates a very large magnetic field um, that you can put it in you can basically put it in a box built you know fabricated from annealed iron or electrical steel and the um, it will reduce the stray field of the magnet because the permeability of something like an annealed iron has a value of about a thousand and what that means is is that annealed iron can conduct about a thousand times as much magnetic flux for a given volume as uh, as air so effectively it concentrates the magnetic flux within its own surfaces and it reduces the size of the stray field for a magnet with a given dipole moment so the idea of dielectric constant is, is similar but it's the concentration of electric flux um, you know, it's complicated, um, you know, but that's basically part and parcel of antenna design, so it would seem. So we need a value for dielectric constant, um, and I'm sure there are ways of calculating that, but I looked it up, and the PVC insulator used in Maplin's 1.2 millimeter single core equipment wire is three, so that's great. So we have a dielectric constant of three. We need to know the relationship between dielectric constant and the velocity factor, and so it's another equation. And what it turns out is that the velocity factor is the uh, reciprocal of the square root of the dielectric constant. So big K equals 1 over the square root of little k. If we put the value for dielectric constant, it's 1 over the square root of 3, which basically gives us a value of 0.58. So that's the uh, velocity factor. But of course, we have to express this as a percentage, which would basically be, you know, fifty-eight percent. So, back to maximum effective length, uh, wavelength uh, over one four multiplied by one hundred over k minus one. Uh, we have the value for velocity factor now. So we need to calculate the value um, for uh, a wavelength. Um, so. I'm thinking Mongolia on long wave. One of my objectives is to try and hear Mongolia on long wave. So they have a signal at 164 kilohertz. What's the wavelength? Well, C equals uh, F lambda, where C is the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Rearrange that equation for wavelength. Lambda is C over F, so that's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second divided by 1.64 times 10 to the 5 hertz. Um, so we have a wavelength of 1.8 kilometers. So that's what we're looking at and so what we want to do now is put that into the equation for maximum effective length it's effectively 1.8 kilometers divided by 2.92 gives a value of 626.46 meters so that could be correct of course it could be wrong but if you follow the uh, the, uh, the equation put input in the variables that's what you get 626 meters so potentially 1.2 kilometers of a you know uh, 1.8 kilometer beverage might really not be uh, contributing much or anything to the quality of the signal if you hear one so what are the conclusions from this for me <laughs> well the beverage is one of the simplest antenna designs and you know uh, when I first looked at it calculating the maximum effective length appeared pretty straightforward but there's a lot of complexity arising from applying numerical values to the, to the variables. You know, some of this information is kind of ambiguous. Um, the maths provides a good framework for antenna design, but 
you know, in the absence of empirical information, you have to make assumptions. You know, I'm assuming that my value of three for the particular type of PVC used in Maplin 1.2 millimeter single core equipment wire is correct, but of course it might not be exactly correct. And you know, ultimately the performance, you know, of any antenna is complicated by external factors, propagation, the receiver you're using, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. As I said, it would be really, you know, it's quite complex to to build an antenna and actually, you know, measure its performance. Um, so, whatever whatever happens, you know, antenna design is always going to be complicated, even if you're looking at something simple like a beverage. But you know, I think it's fun, and you know, it requires some maths and some of it's complicated but you know if that's your thing um, there's a lot of enjoyment that can be had from you know building your own antenna and designing antennas for you know use in this great hobby of ours so I thought I'd share that with you I might have another go at one of these um, probably after I've tested my uh, beverage and posted some reception videos but um, I hope you enjoyed it and it wasn't too kind of taxing it was taxing for me to produce it um, but I hope it was at least of some interest um, so thanks for watching